Yo, Spaz, it's your boy Pronto Spaz out, man. And I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. She get in the coop and be ready to go off. Pull on a Maddie, it be a throw off. Tesla truck, I be ripping the dough off. Flexing the muscle, she know I'm a show off. All right, so we got Pronto Spaz out off the porch with us today, man. Yo, why they call me Spaz? May 17th, be on the lookout, man. Pronto Spaz out off the porch. Okay, you got a new project coming up, huh? For sure, a lot of new sh a lot of new sh that's what's up, man. Nah, I appreciate you coming to, uh, to come by today, man. For sure. Feeling blessed. Yeah. What else you got shaking here in Atlanta, man? Um, I actually came out here to do some more work. I want to get in, get into some more studios. You know, like we've been back to back, state to state, like the last two weeks where we ain't been home, just been working. Came out here on some studio shit. Then I had bumped, uh, I had bumped my homie. His name Lotto. He was like, uh, he was like off the porch. They they said something about you. Ooh, oh yeah. You should get up. You should try to get up with him. So I hit him through the DM. <laughs> now we got some business in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just always trying to network and connect. That's love right there, man. For sure. All right. So talk to us about life in Chicago, man. Uh, <laughs> I I I'd rather I rather not talk about life in Chicago. Like <laughs> have my fun. It's time to move around. It's getting too crazy though. You know. Okay. See a better route, better yeah. things on the big end, better things. You know. I feel that, man. All right, so what was your childhood like uh, growing up? What were you into before before music? Uh, bro, I, I ain't gonna lie. I always been like a, like an active writer. Like, I ain't gonna lie. I started writing before I went outside. I used to do poetry and shit. Then um, when I went outside, I tried the sports thing, like basketball, football, and shit like that. It ain't work. I ain't really too much like that shit. So. Um, then, like I said, we come from we come from the out west, the, like the the juke parties and the fiestas. If you're from out west, you're real familiar with a fiesta. We come from that shit, but now all that shit over with. It's like the older we got, it's like the worst shit got. It's time to move around, bigger and better things. I got rapping now, so I'm finna chase rap. You feel me? The shit got me, getting me way farther than everything else I was doing shit. Real so, shit. Yeah. At what age would you say you jumped off the porch in Chicago? Uh. It's like 12, 13 or something like that. And I started going to Amundsen Park. It's like 12, 13, probably like sixth, seventh grade. I think that's kind of average. Yeah. Anybody else? Anybody else like fourth or fifth or some shit? That's probably the lowest I'd have heard all my homies. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. So talk to us about your relationship with your dad, man. That's my ace. Um, free him, by the way. Um, my pops is federally incarcerated. I'd rather not discuss the case or nothing like that. But um, that's my that's my dog. Um, it's really why I'm trying to chase this this rap shit. Figure out a way to get my pops out of jail. That's that's one of my biggest. That's one of my biggest things. One yeah. of my biggest goals right now. Get my pops out of jail. Really don't be no more, you know. It's my dog. You communicate often with him? No. He in he in one of them prisons where it's like it be so much shit going on, they going on lockdown regularly, you know what I'm saying? So I probably talk to him like every three weeks, every month. But okay. that call, but that call be everything though. That call is like, man, you know, man, you feel me? If you're a fair baby, that call, you feel me? Yeah. Call be everything. Free my pops, free Smitty. Yeah, how proud is he? <laughs> <laughs> man, I, he called me, he be like, Everybody know you in this bitch, Joe. <laughs> Everybody know you, Joe. I be like, damn. And the feds talking about me. I gotta be doing something right, but that ain't somewhere I want my pops at. You know what I'm saying? So I'm finna work hard. I gotta put this shit in quadruple time if I got to get them out that bitch. You know? Yeah, I feel that for sure. Did you go to college? I started. Got like three months in. Then, shit. That was it. That was it. <laughs> I don't like. I don't like being told what to do, bro. Like I got. I kind of got a problem with authority. So, what um, were you trying to study? Uh, business, business marketing, and I think it was music engineer. Cause okay. I wanted to learn. I wanted to get down Fruity Loops and, and Pro Tools all the way. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, you could go to classes for shit like that. Mm -hmm. I feel that for sure. All right. So when did you first start rapping? How old were you? Um. See, when I first started, like putting like shit on beats. I was probably like nine, 10 or some shit. I always did it with like a camera. Like I, I had like a, a computer speaker and play the beat and just record myself on the camera so it'd sound like a song, you feel oh, me? Yeah. Then, um, then my first time actually recording in the studio was, I, I, I had to be like 12 or 13 or some shit like that. We, um, 
It was my homie Guala Basement. He was the only one in the hood who had a studio. Me, me and Bloomingdale. Me and Wild Bansy or some shit like that. But he the only one in the hood had a studio. That's why everybody used to go record that. I think we did like a No Hands remix. I heard myself on that bitch. And from now, I just wanted to keep on getting better, better, better. You know what I'm saying? That's why, that's really what I believe in, you know? So you started taking it serious back then, then Yeah, huh? yeah. Like, I mean, I always took it serious in my head, but you know, like, it take a minute for you to realize, like, damn, I could really rap for the entire world. Like, that's a different feeling when you get them type of reactions. That's what make me, that's what, that's kind of what made me like, all right, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. Gotta rap. Gotta figure out the rapping thing. Even if it's, even if it take a, no, I ain't gonna say that. <laughs> I ain't gonna say it, even if it take no hundred years, but. Like, be patient, man. Take your time. You feel me? Like, don't rush it. Like, let shit play out. Yeah. Big, that's what I'm big on right now. That's what I'm trying to stay locked in on. Not rushing shit. Being patient. Waiting my turn. You know? I feel that, yeah. Who were some of your favorite uh, rappers you were listening to when you were growing up? Bro, I used to listen to Off The Wall shit. Like, y'all wouldn't believe it. I used, I used to actually, like, listen to DMX and them and shit like that. Um, NWA and like you feel me shit like like off the wall shit I ain't used to listen to the average Chicago shit you know everybody was familiar with twisting them back in the day crucial mm -hmm. conflict and you know the rest of, like the 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 rest of the old Chicago legends but like I used to listen to everything I think that's kind of why I got a keen sense for music I be liking doing just all type of shit different shit like want to want to show the world different want to show people different you know what I'm saying yeah all right so how did you get your rap name man? All right, um, this is gonna be funny than a motherfucker. Hope it don't come back to bite me. I'll just say that. Um, back in the day, my favorite rapper was Soldier Boy. You feel me? And he had a song called Pronto. And that was my favorite song from him by the time. So I started calling myself that shit. Then the Spaz Out came about from a fallen member, um, well, a fallen brother that I had. His name was Jonathan Cersei. He called himself Spaz Out. He was doing the rap thing just like me. Shit, and he passed away a couple years back. And I just took the, I just kept the spaz out there going. I'm like, I want to keep bro name alive. You feel me? So I'm gonna continue to, I'm gonna continue to spaz. Like as he will say, why they call me spaz? Like you'll hear me say that shit. That's where yeah. I got that shit from, spaz. You know? Yes. All right. So what's your thoughts on the music industry right now? If you're an artist <laughs> that's like dibble dabbing in the music industry, be mindful, be patient, and watch what the fuck you sign. Get a lawyer, man. Get a lawyer. Watch what you sign. That's all I can really say about the industry. Other than that, I feel like I'm becoming a part of it, so I ain't really got nothing bad to say. Yeah. You feel me? I feel that. All right, so Jiggy Music, man. Talk to us about the creation of this breakthrough single that you had. Man, for sure. Um, getting Jiggy is a term where we from. Like, it got a, it got a million and one meanings, you feel me? Like, getting Jiggy, like, but... I was trying to turn it into a dance thing with the song, so get jiggy, you know what I'm saying? Jiggy music. Um, damn, I'm forgetting something. I just forgot something. Oh, I had made a song. I had made a song called Wavy. This was a this was an old old song, but all my homie them was like, "Shorty, your ass make jiggy music." You feel me? Like, like your shit be jiggy. It get it, it, it get a motherfucker bouncy for some reason. You feel me? I'm like, oh yeah, that's decent. I'm gonna make a song called Jiggy Music, you feel me? The song actually like caught on and took me like up, up, like <laughs> up, up. I'm up here now off that one song, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So I'm trying to keep that going too. Jiggy Music for sure. Probably, probably put out a tape or something, nothing but Jiggy Music okay. later on down the line. Give them something like that. Did you expect that one to take off like it did? No, I didn't expect for none of my shit to do what it did. Like you, but you, you know, but you know that's like, you know that be the humbleness in you, bro. You feel me? Like you don't be thinking like, damn, people really like fuck with me. People like looking at me. People watching me and shit. Like all this shit new. Like you ain't used to that type of shit. When you hear about a motherfucker watching you or uh, looking at you, you think it's like some niggas on some bullshit or something. You feel what I'm saying? You don't think it's like the world actually like, oh yeah, this nigga a rapper. He actually can rap. You know? Have you started to hear other rappers make jiggy music since then? I mean, I don't really like I don't really pay attention to like other rapper shit. You get what I'm saying? I really be more so focused on my own shit. It's like you kind of lose your I feel like you kind of lose your momentum or you lose yourself when you kind of sunk into like what everybody else got going on. You feel me? So I try to stay in my own little box, stay in my own little. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel that. 
Then you followed up with that uh, Donk remix, man. <laughs> that shit went crazy, too. Yeah, for sure, for sure, man. Shout out Soldier Boy, for real, though. Um, shit, that came about from Jiggy Music. Jiggy Music was an accidental ass shaking song. That was not supposed to be an ass shaking song while everybody just started sending their ass through my DM. Like, everybody, you feel me? The song get to going up like that. Then I did a twerk contest. I think I'm finna do another one. I did a twerk contest. That bitch went to the moon. Now I made the song. Now I really set the song off like it's an ass shaking song. So I'm like, hmm. Everybody kind of doing these old beats. I think DC Genom had just did the coffee shop beat at the time. I'm like, damn, I gotta find me, I gotta find me something, you feel me? My homie Co Money, matter of fact, shout out my homie Co Money. He brought the beat to me. He was like, let's do it together. Ooh, ooh. But I never got to the studio with him. We never sat down to do the shit, you feel me? I ended up in Atlanta. I hit that bitch. I'm like, just let me play with it. Like, let's let me see what it's, you feel me? Let's let me see what it do. And it went crazy, you feel me? Like, all right, bet. We gotta put this out. Fuck it, shorty. All right, bet. We gonna put this out. And that bitch go to the. Moon, like that one hit harder than Jiggy Music. Yeah, it like, did. You feel me? And I'm like, damn. No, what's fucking me up? A lot of people don't even know that that Soldier Boy beat. Yeah. A lot of people think that that's my beat now. You feel <laughs> you me? Like, took it. I'm like, damn, I killed that bitch that hard. Like, damn. Do you know if Soldier Boy heard it? I don't. I don't know, man. Shit, if he shit, if he did, that'll be smacking. You know, shout out him. Yeah. Uh, what's the music scene like in Chicago right now? It sound, it's starting to sound real fucking repetitive, if you ask me. It's a lot of repetitive shit. It's only a couple niggas bringing different shit to the table. But really, everybody sound the same because it's like everybody living the same lifestyle, everybody doing the same shit. Like everybody in tour with motherfuckers now, so they got shit to talk about. Like, you feel me? It's just, it's just repetitive. Like, bring some different shit, come with some different shit. You gotta come different in this shit if you wanna last long, you know? Yeah. Do you feel like that's what helps your career since you're not making this drill music? You know, make it like the same type of music that's coming out the city? I, I ain't going to lie. Like, I come different all the way around the board. I don't even look like motherfuckers. I don't, you feel me? I, I separate myself every time. Like, that's what niggas, like, a lot of niggas got us. They, they can't put me in the category with a lot of people. I don't even, like, you feel me? Plus, I can rap. That's the best part. You know what I'm saying? Like, marketable nigga can rap. Oh, I'm gonna put something to this shit. Let me actually just see what I could do with this shit. You know what I'm saying? I never know how far this shit could take me. Cause look at where I'm at now. Shout out Dirty Glove Bastard. Yes, sir. There it is. Um, talk to us about your relationship with G Herbo, man. I see he be commenting a lot on your post and all that. Really showing you support. For sure. I, uh, my second time I was in California, um, I had a studio session with Oz. Ozzy on the beat. Shout out him. Um, and shit, I was at the studio with, with, my, with my boy Locker. Shit, I had, what was I at? I think I was on my first or second verse, my first or second verse. As soon as I had got up in the locker head, came, knocked on the door, brought me in the studio, her was sitting down, you feel me? We was just, we just got the chopping, you feel me? I played him a couple of my shit. He like, oh yeah, shorty, yeah, you next, you feel me? He was really low key on me about the whole independent shit. He like, man, go on ahead and put all that shit out right now while you can, you feel me? You know the labels get the, you, you know how that shit go. Mm -hmm. um, but shout out broski, then shit. Off the Instagram, look, he just, shit, he just, he followed the motherfucker, just got the fuck with my shit. Everything I dropped, he then fucked with my shit. So shout out, bros. Yeah. All right, so why have you decided to remain independent? I'm sure every label was hitting you up or has hit you up at some point, man. Because ain't nobody came with what the fuck I want. Just me being honest, you feel me? Like, shit, I know I'm, I know I'm gonna make it. You feel me? Regardless, with, with or without a label, I know I'm gonna make it. So, like, <laughs> I know what y'all could do. <laughs> I know what y'all could build. I know what y'all could build around me. But I need this done. If they can't give me that, yeah. nah, I'm cool. I'll just wait. I'll thug it out. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> I'm learning new shit every day. I'm learning every day as I go. You feel me? It ain't hard. You just need a lot of fucking money. But guess what money at? Everywhere. Mm -hmm. You could get money from anywhere now. It's a million and more ways to make money. And as long as you got money, you're going to make it. Yeah. What is it that you look for then? Is it creative control? Is it a big number? Is it ownership? Freedom? Everything. All that. Yeah. I want fairness, equality. If I want to look at it like that. Fairness and equality. I'm the prize. You know what I'm saying? So... End of the day, 
That's what I want. You can't give me what I want. I'm all right. I'll thug it out. I feel that, man. All right, so you got this new video out called Throw Off, man. And this shit is wild. This shit is turned. <laughs> Where did the creative direction for this music video come from? Is that from you? Is that from the director? Did you guys plot on this together? Look, the, the idea was Uncle Luke. You get what I'm saying? If you know, if you're familiar with Uncle Luke from Florida, man, he had all the holes getting buck, wild, nasty. Uncle Luke, you go to Uncle Luke crib, it's all type of holes in there getting buck, wild, nasty in that bitch. You feel me? So with all the ass shaking that circulated around me, my homie Tookie, he started calling me Uncle Luke. He like, you know what? <laughs> You need ass, unlimited holes and shit in your videos now. You feel me? So I brought it to uh, Lock Our Films. We was working at the, we was working together at the time. Um, I had brought it to Lock Our Films, and he was like, "I bet we gonna make you like a drum set, a <laughs> ass, and you just you just act like you a drummer." You feel me? I'm like, "Damn, I right, bet that shit sounds smacking." We put together the video. Shout out AJ Spitz. Um, shout out Remy for co-directing. Um, shit. It, it, <laughs> shit, I'm not gonna lie, how it came out, I didn't think it was gonna come out that good. That shit, really? that shit was epic, like, and it was exactly how I wanted it to, you know what I'm saying? So shout out Lock Our Films for putting that together, AJ Spitz, if he was in on that, but for sure, for sure, shout out to him. Yeah, looked like you had a lot of fun shooting that too, man. Hell yeah, I'm around <laughs> none but big booties, big booties, just, that's how I want to live life anyway, none but just big booties around me, big booties and good vibes slut slut what 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 uh what way say i just want to fuck every girl no i just want to slut every girl in the world for sure <laughs> <laughs> all right you got another new video out called uh let me get him man this shit's been turning up too but for sure for sure yeah. what can you tell us about that song in that video that I ain't gonna lie, I was mad as hell in the studio when I made that song. I'm gonna just put that out there. I was mad as hell when I made that song. But that came from, um, I, I really was just talking about everything that was going on around the time. But I wanted to like put it into some turn shit, some type of way, make it into a positive. I got to seeing like fast cars. As soon as I heard the beat, like I just got to thinking like fast and furious, fast cars and shit like that, us tearing down another city, fucking that bitch up, you feel me? So. I made the song like based, you feel me? Like based upon that, you feel me? Turned the scene up. Like we, we, can, we went out to California, everybody like had like at least like 25, 30, 40 foreigners out there fucking the whole city up. It's like, let me get them. That really, I really look at that like it's my intro before my tape. You feel me? I, um, my tape, why they call me Spaz Dropping May 17th. I just wanted to get them like at least two two more before I dropped my tape. So Let Me Get Them was really just a set off for the summer, you know? Okay, I got you. So how long have you been uh, working on this tape? Cause I know fans been waiting for it for a minute, man. <sighs> Shit, it been, it been two years since I dropped uh, Why They Call Me Spaz. So I'm talking about Why They Call Me Spaz. It been two years since I dropped Spazzing Out Part One. So I know they have been waiting for a minute, but I got y'all, the wait is over. Y'all got about 21 days, 22 days or something like that. Catch me. So what type of vibes are gonna be on the project? All type of shit, all type of shit. I ain't got just one lane. Y'all ain't finna get a whole tape full of jiggy music, no, none of that shit. 14 songs, all different shit. All fast paced shit, all shit that's relating to the streets right now, what's going on, you feel me? Y'all gonna feel me though. Why they call me Spaz May 17th? Who are some of the producers you work with on it? Uh, shit. Woodley on the beat for certain. Uh, he actually produced my next hit that I'm finna get ready and drop. It's called Sluts. Um, <laughs> no bout. Nine Waves. Um, I got a couple of DY Crazies. Got okay. a Spank on the beat on the. Um, who? I got a uh, Shouty Do. Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else I got on that bitch? Who else I got on that bitch? Um, um, what's his name? Oh, Reek So Blow. Um, I got some shit with Slick the Third on there. Um, damn, what's his name, man? What's his name? Oh, I'm trying to get some shit from Kia Wonder bitch ass, but he gotta call me, send some of that shit through. I need a pack of some bitch. Um, damn. Who so are you still working on it or is it finalized? Oh no, 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 no. I'm still working on it. I need at least like 30 more songs before May 5th. 
type shit. So um, I really been lacking the last couple of days, but I'm going to get back to that shit. I need at least like 30, 40 more songs just to pick from because I got like a cool. I could say a hundred card now since we've been traveling, just unreleased, ain't out on YouTube, none of that shit. So if I could get like another 30 songs, I'd be decent. Then I had everything I could pick from. I don't know exactly which ones I want, you know? Yeah. What about feature wise? You gonna have anyone else on there or is it just, you just gonna be spazzing that by Oh no, 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 no. I'm gonna have a couple of features on that. Um, it's, it's two features in the works. I don't wanna speak on them, you okay. feel me? But I know for certain, for certain, the Heavy Steppers, DCG, and uh, but the other two features who gonna remain nameless up until it's finalized and put out, you know? Yeah, I feel that. Uh, so you work with my boy One Take J, man. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Shout out, bro. How'd you link up with him? Just being out there in LA or? No, shit on some Instagram shit. You oh, feel me? Real? Um, I ain't gonna lie, like I said, bro, I don't be thinking motherfuckers be fucking with my shit, you feel me? So I go on this page one day, I see me had a song with Blueface. I'm like, I don't know he fuck, he, he fuck with the LA, I guess he one of the LA vibes, you know what I'm saying? So. So shit, I uh so my first time out there in Cali or whatever, he just told me to hit his phone. We linked up, went to the studio, like next day did a video type shit. You feel <laughs> me? I'm like, damn, bro, you fucking my shit that high. He bro, yo ass go crazy. Y'all nah, nigga, you go crazy. You feel me? Then um shit, we shoot the video. That bitch had like a hundred K. Um, I got issues out now, out on all platforms, YouTube, all that, go get that. But shout out Broski. Um, yeah, he he kept me tapped in, you feel me? Only nigga really like. Hit a motherfucker phone. Oh yeah, you straight? Ooh, yeah, go on. Ooh, go get some clothes. You know what I'm saying? Like first nigga to like accustom me to LA. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So shout out, bro. Yeah, yeah, he's solid, man. Oh, shout out, uh, Loader Great for sure, for sure. Loader Great. That's another producer. Okay, yeah. What has being a father taught you about life? It, it definitely, it definitely showed me that I don't want them to see nothing that I didn't see. Like. I know the world a crazy place. I know it's a scary place, but I don't want them to. I don't want them to get accustomed to that. Cause the shit that we think normal, like the shit that I think normal in my head, ain't normal to regular society. It ain't normal in reality. So I want. I want. That's. I gotta watch what I do around them. You get what I'm saying? Like I know I gotta watch a lot of the stuff I say. Uh, damn. Damn, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah, it'll definitely slow you down too if you're out there living fast too. I mean, I mean, they only slow you down if you let them though. I think that's a part of being a father for real, you know what I'm saying? Or being a parent, period. Like you gotta make that time. Like, cause it's a lot of time you gonna miss. It's a lot of time, a lot of niggas missing. They can't get back, you know what I'm saying? Or it ain't been too late. Niggas be locked up and, man. Where I'm from, a lot of niggas be dying, so I ain't gonna lie, like... <sighs> Alright, what else you working on? What else coming up, man? 2021. <laughs> more videos, man. More networking. More features. Y'all gonna see me more so everywhere. I don't know, I don't know what's going on right now. Fires, fires like where I'm finna move to or nothing. But coming soon, man. Moving out the rack, man. We getting up out that bitch. Um, shout out everybody, man. Shout out my hood, Capitol Hill, man. Shout out everybody, my team, my family, my gang. Y'all know who y'all is. I would name all y'all if I could, but y'all to watch me grow. Y'all done been there. Stay here, man. You know what's going on, man. I'm trying to bring us home. Bring us home to go. Like I said, shout out Capitol Hill, man. Shout out everybody off the new. All my peoples, man. My mama, my kids, you know. Everybody, man, for sure. She get in the coupe and be ready to go off. Pull on a Maddie, bitch, it be a throw off. Tesla truck, I be ripping the dough off. Flexing the muscle, she know I'm a show off. Pause. Who got a drop on the ops? 